Design and control of roller grasper V2 for in-hand manipulation. In-hand manipulation is an age-old question in robotics with a rich literature from two-finger grippers with dexterous hands. In order for robots to take on a wide range of everyday tasks, they need to be capable of sophisticated object manipulation. Many vital higher-level tasks will rely on a robot's capability to perform in-hand manipulation by reorienting objects while maintaining the grasp. Out of all the grasping and manipulation tasks, in-hand manipulation is among the ones that require the most dexterity. There are different approaches to in-hand manipulation that have been explored, which rely on gravity with control slip, induced accelerations, or the environment to reduce the dexterity required of the hand. However, such approaches require complex control and modeling schemes, or dependency on available environmental geometry. Contrary to modeling the complex dynamics involved in grasping and in-hand manipulation, some researchers use reinforcement learning to search for optimal policies Deep reinforcement learning has been implemented successfully on the 24 DOF shadow hand for dynamically moving a cylinder in hand and for arbitrarily reorienting a cube using visual information. However, both examples require very high redundancy of the fingers to maintain stable grasps. On the other hand, imitation learning aims to learn control policies by observing expert demonstrations. There are in general two types of approaches to tackle an imitation learning problem. Behavior cloning aims to train the agent to learn a mapping from observations to actions given demonstrations in a supervised learning fashion. Another approach is inverse reinforcement learning, which attempts to learn a reward function that describes the given demonstrations. Our previous work used articulated, actively driven cylindrical rollers at the fingertips of a grasper to explore imparting motions within a grasp using active surfaces. The grasper used three modular three dot fingers and demonstrated full six dot spatial manipulation of objects, including a sphere, cube, and cylinder, as well as various grasping modalities. One limitation of the previous roller grasper is the grasp stability. Due to the cylindrical design of the fingertips, several grasping configurations are unstable, resulting in undetermined manipulation behaviors. The redundant combinations of grasping configurations also complicates the control scheme, as the configuration used is dependent on specific manipulation tasks and the object being manipulated. In this work, we present an updated version of the roller grasper. In this new design, active surfaces are achieved by spherical rolling fingertips with two degrees of freedom, a pivoting motion for surface reorientation and a continuous rolling motion for moving the object. Instantaneous kinematics was derived and objects were successfully manipulated, both with a custom handcrafted control scheme as well as one learned through imitation learning, in simulation and experimentally on the hardware. The grasper consists of three fingers, each having three degrees of freedom. The first off is at the base of each finger and consists of a revolute joint directly driven by a robotic dynamical actuator. The other two off are located at each fingertip and are responsible for steering and rolling. The second joint is orthogonal to the first off and is driven by a micro DC motor with built-in gearbox and quarter chain encoder. For a compact form factor, this actuator is located remotely from the axis of rotation through a timing belt and allows the roller assembly to be pitched up to 180 degrees. The final doff is actuated using the same type of geared motor but housed inside the roller assembly allowing it to perform continuous rotation of the spherical contact surface without its cables winding. The roller is encased in a pair of 2mm thick semi-spherical silicon covers to provide a high friction surface for grasping and manipulation. A custom API was developed to interface between the low-level information and the manipulation algorithm. Information transferred during the bidirectional communication includes positions for each joint of the fingers, the current limit of the base joint, as well as the control parameters for controlling the motors. A microcontroller is used to handle the communication with the manipulation algorithm as well as low-level control of the motors. Manipulating an object through rolling contact can be viewed as navigating the rollers on the object. Therefore, an object transformation can be achieved by navigating the rollers from their initial contact locations to the desired final contact locations, 
While there's no unique solution for the paths the rollers take during their navigation, for given initial and final grasping poses, it is possible to solve for the instantaneous joint velocities based on known object geometry, object pose, object velocity, and contact conditions. Object geometry and pose are necessary to calculate the contact locations, which determine the relationship between the joint motions and given contact motions on the rollers. This information can be subsequently used to map the desired object motion to the motions at the contact point on the object. Applying the contact condition of rolling without slipping means that the contact velocity on the object and the contact velocity on the roller are equal. Therefore, inverse kinematics can be used to calculate the joint velocities required for the desired object motion. Based on this formulation, we developed our handcraft control strategy, which can be summarized as follows. Assuming the object being manipulated is a sphere, given the object initial and target poses, we compute object instantaneous motion, which in our case is simply a fraction of the difference between initial and target poses. Subsequently, we can compute the contact location and contact motion on the roller based on rolling without slipping contact condition. And finally, we compute the orientation of the pivot joint and the motions of base and roller joints. Note that we didn't perform a full inverse kinematics and get the pivot motion in the strategy because the contact locations are almost always very close to the pivot joint. So the finger is always close to a singularity. The pivot joint is used to reorient the roller so that the rolling direction at the contact point is aligned with the desired direction. Because this analytical approach assumes that the object being manipulated is a sphere, it does not work on all of the object shapes, but it works relatively well on objects with low aspect ratios, such as a cube. In order to develop an algorithm that can be generalized to more situations, we adopted imitation learning, specifically Dagger, in order to learn how to transform an object the optimal policy was learned through expert demonstrations characterized by the previous handcraft control policy. Our state space has a dimension of 35, which includes the following information. State 1 through 16 contains all information from current frame, including joint positions of the grasper, object position, and object orientation. State 17 to 23 includes object position and the orientation of the previous frame. And state 24 through 35 includes object initial and target poses. The nine-dimensional action space contains the desired joint positions of the next frame. We constructed a deep neural network to determine the actions for each of the nine joints using the states described in the previous page as input. The network consisted of three fully connected hidden layers with leaky relu activations, except at the output layer, and 256 nodes in each hidden layer. The handcrafted control policy described earlier was used to generate a number of expert trajectories, which are simply a series of state action pairs. We first trained our policy to predict expert action by minimizing the L2 loss between the predicted action and the expert action in a supervised approach. Subsequent policy updates are computed according to Dagger. We also implemented a method to increase the number of expert demonstrations iteratively. For a given object, by imitating the expert demonstration examples, we learn a policy supported by these expert demonstrations. This control embedding is able to interpolate between known trajectories using a nearest neighbor policy in order to generate trajectories for previously unseen transformations. Although our control policies are developed for a full six stop transformation, the translation capability is relatively limited compared to the rotation capability which is why we decided to focus on object rotation in the experiments. We used the Mujoko physics engine to simulate both handcrafted control policy and the learned policy before transferring them to the physical setup. Experiments were run by specifying a desired orientation in angle axis representation. Most experiments were carried out with a 6 cm cube. The experimental setup included the grasper, an overhead RGBD camera, and various objects including a cube, a cube with filled edges, and spheres of various masses and sizes. The handcrafted control policy was able to be run both open loop and closed loop. Since object orientation and position were used as input to the control policy, only the cube was run in the closed loop operation with QR tags on all six faces. 
open loop runs with the spheres were used to qualitatively verify the handcraft control policy on the hardware. The evaluation metric is simply a form of quaternion error, calculating the difference between two orientations using their quaternion representations. The experiments were divided up as follows. Simple transformations, which had axis of rotation with strong Z components. Difficult transformations, which had axis of rotations with strong X and Y components. And novel object transformations, which consisted of transforming an elongated rectangular prism with filleted edges. The reason transformations with strong Z components for the rotation axis were easier was due to the three-finger design of the grasper, leading to a much better force closure around X-Y direction than the Z direction. All experiments specify the target as an axis and a 90-degree rotation about that axis. A summary of the results is shown in this figure, where S stands for simple cases, D stands for difficult cases, and N stands for novel cases. The imitation learning method performed better for 3 out of the 5 simple transformation cases. The average orientation error across these 5 trials shows that the imitation learning method and handcraft control are comparable when performing object rotations about vertical axis. However, the handcraft control policy has more than three times the standard deviation of the imitation learning. As with any physical system, there is a performance difference when compared to the simulation setup. Fortunately, this difference was small with the imitation learning's results in simulation. We believe this is due to the inclusion of sensor noise in the simulation, as well as fine-tuning the contact model to more closely align with observations of the physical system performance. For the more difficult transformations, the imitation learning outperformed the handcraft control policy across all six trials by a lower percent average error. Three of these trials, D1 to D3, include target poses not trained in simulation. Tests with the novel object demonstrate the similar results to the simple transformation cases, with comparable percent average errors between two methods and the imitation learning method having significantly lower standard deviations. In conclusion, we presented Roller Grasper V2, a new design for a grasper based on steerable spherical rollers located at the fingertips. The hardware design choices and the engineering details were provided. A handcrafted control policy was constructed that utilized the active surfaces of the rollers to transform an object to an arbitrary target pose. This control policy was used to generate expert trajectories in order to develop an imitation learning based policy. Both policies were evaluated in simulation and experimentally on the hardware. Future work includes developing algorithms to manipulate more diverse objects, developing a novel mechanism that solves the non-holonomic constraints, and incorporating tactile sensing on the rollers to provide high-fidelity feedback.